Let's make a basic color wheel. I'm gonna click on the plus button to start a new canvas, and then I'm going to click on screen size. So I have a basic size of my screen. Next, I'm gonna go up to layers, and I'm gonna click on the background color, and I wanna choose a pale gray color about there. Next, I'm going to draw on layer one with white color. So I'm gonna go up to the color palette and choose a pure white. Now, if I'm not sure if that's absolutely pure white because it maybe looks a little bit gray, I'm gonna go over to values on my color menu and then I can see that I still have a little bit of color there. So I'm gonna bring these all the way down and then that is going to be pure white. So I'm gonna go back to the disc. Now that is pure white. I can also add this to a color palette so that I have a pure white. So I'm gonna add the plus button, create a new palette, and I'm just gonna drag that, whoops, right into the color palette by tapping. So now I know that that is a pure white color. Okay, next I'm gonna check my brushes. Go down to calligraphy, choose monoline. Next, I'm going to check the size of my brush, and I think about there would be a good brush, and I'm gonna make sure that my opacity is at 100. And I'm going to draw a large circle, and then I'm going to hold it, it makes an oval. Now with my other finger, I'm going to tap, and it makes it a perfect circle. But if I let go of my finger first, it becomes an oval again. So I wanna make sure I let go of my pencil first and then it stays as a perfect circle. Okay, so now I can see that on layer one, I have a circle. Next, I'm going to add a drawing guide. So I'm gonna to go to the wrench and then go to canvas and then turn on drawing guide. Next, edit drawing guide. Choose isometric, click done. Next, I'm going to move my circle until I get it right in the middle where there's a line going right down the middle, starting from that little round dot. And I think about there will be good. Okay, grab my brush. I'm going to draw a straight line down and make sure you go all the way from the top here and you're going to bring that down. You notice how that's wobbly? If you hold it still, it will straighten up and then you can release. Another option, and let's do this now, is we're gonna tap on that layer and I'm gonna turn on Drawing Assist. So now it will help me draw straight lines. Next, I'm going to draw an X right through my circle. So I'm gonna start on the edge and I'm gonna draw it right through and release and I'm going to draw another one and I'm gonna draw it right through. And it does not have to be absolutely perfect for our project. So if you have it just about there, that's great. Now you wanna check and make sure that your line goes all the way to the circle and that there's no gap there because if you do and you go to pour in the paint, there's gonna be a big gap and the point paint is gonna pour out. Next, I'm gonna get my first primary color. Let's go back to the disc. I'm gonna choose bright red as my first primary color. Next, drag the dot into one of the pie pieces. I'm gonna skip the next pie piece and go to my next primary color, which is yellow. Drag that down. Next, I'm gonna skip this one and I'm gonna put my final primary color, that is, the hue or the color that cannot be made by mixing any other colors of paint. So there's blue. Now, which color goes here on a color wheel? Well, that is a mix between red and yellow. Fun fact, before they named this color orange, they actually called this color red yellow. Then they made a new name for it called orange. So between blue and yellow, if you mix those two paint colors together, between blue and yellow, you're gonna get green. So I'm gonna place green, and then between blue and red, we have purple. 
or otherwise known as violet. Violet is the technical name for that. So that looks great. Next, I'm gonna go to my layer and I'm gonna tap it again. I'm gonna turn off drawing assist. We don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna tap one more time and I'm gonna turn on alpha lock. This makes it so that if I paint anywhere on my design, it's only gonna paint where I already have paint. This is not gonna work if you filled that layer with a background color originally. That's why we changed this color to gray instead of putting it on layer one. Tap on the magic wand, choose Gaussian Blur. Next, I'm going to put my pen down and drag to the right until I get a nice blur. If I go too far, it gets grayed out and it gets a little bit too blended. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to maybe make it around 40, maybe 50. I think that's good. Okay, next. I want to make a duplicate of that layer. So I'm going to swipe to the left and choose duplicate. Now I have two of them. So just so that you can see what we're doing here, I'm going to turn off the check mark, which means that that layer is still visible, but we can't see it. We're seeing the one that's underneath right here. Choose on your color palette, choose a pure black color. Next, go to your layers panel tap on that and choose select. It is now selecting everything that you have painted. Layer menu, tap on layer one and choose fill layer. You'll see now that it filled it in black. I'm gonna tap on the N so that I can change some of the qualities of that layer. And I'm gonna turn the opacity down to maybe around 50%. Next, I want to take off alpha lock <clears throat> because I want to blend this and I want it to go outside of these boundaries. I'm going to turn this other layer back on. Now we can't see the black layer because it's underneath the colorful layer. But I'm going to show you where it is by clicking on the arrow and then I'm going to move it off to the side here. So now it becomes a shadow. I want to blur that shadow so I'm going to go up to the magic wand and choose Gaussian Blur and then I'm going to slide my pen to the right until I get a nice blur, something that I like. About right there would be good for me, that's 17%. Next, I am going to actually go over to the wrench and I'm going to turn off the drawing guide so now I'm not seeing those lines, they're not so distracting. Go back to the layers menu, tap on the colorful layer, we're going to add a new layer on top because what I want to do is I want to add highlights and shadows, but I don't want to affect the actual colorful layer underneath. If I have a mistake, I only want to correct the mistake on the highlighting layer. So now I'm going to, you know what, I think I'll actually start with my shadows. I have the black paint there already and I am going to try a couple different ways of doing this. I'm going to choose the brush and I'm going to go to airbrushing and choose the soft brush. Next I'm going to change the opacity so it's about 50%. We'll start there and I'm going to change my brush size to maybe about 10%. I want to put a little bit of a shadow and I think that I'll put the shadow on this side right here. I'm going to start here and I want it to only go where there's color here. So I'm going to tap on this layer and choose clipping mask. That means it's going to paper clip to that layer. It's only going to draw then on my colorful circle there. So I'm going to just drag my brush around and try to create sort of like a shadow there so that it looks like it has some round qualities some three-dimensional qualities. And if you don't get it perfect, and I'm just going real gentle, and you know what, I'm bringing my pencil all the way out here so that it only sprays up. If I was to go right there, it would be a little bit too much. So I'm just bringing it right around here. And when you think, okay, I think that I have it how I like, you can test it by going to the magic wand, go back to bl Gaussian Blur, and if you want, you could blur it a little bit and it kind of smooths it out. 
I like that effect, so I'm going to leave that. Next, I'm going to go up and add one more layer on top of that. I want to make sure that I clip it also to there. So I'm going to click on Clipping Mask, and it's all clipped to that layer. That means whenever I draw, it's only going to be on that layer. I'm going to choose my white again, which is here. It's also here. And I still am on my soft brush there. Um, you can try the different brushes out. Uh, I'm going to start with soft brush. I like my opacity at about 50% and the same brush size. This time I'm going to put my highlight right up here and I'm going to go very slowly and add a little bit of highlight. Now I'm going to change my size a little bit smaller so it has a little bit more of a concentrated area and I'm pressing really lightly with my pressure sensitive pencil to create a nice soft highlight and then I can shrink it down to look at that I like how that's coming along I think that I would like a little bit more concentrated highlight in a certain area Okay, now if I'm not sure how it's looking and I want to test something out but I don't want to ruin what I already have, I'm going to click on the plus button to create a new layer. I'm also going to alpha lock, sorry not alpha lock, I'm going to clip this mask. Click on the brush. This time I want to test out maybe a medium hard brush and see what that looks like with my highlights. I'll try, I'll start with around 50%. I want to try adding perhaps a little bit of highlight right in this green area and see what this looks like. That brush is a little bit too big. Two fingers to undo, two finger tap. Let me try this. I do like that. I don't think it's quite perfect so I can undo that and notice it's not affecting any of the other layers. I want to try a different brush. So Maybe I'll try this medium hard airbrush, see if that works a little bit better. Oh, I do like that and I do like how it's dropping off there. I think that, in fact, I might try adding it right up here to the top and see what that looks like. I do like that. I think I might make a bigger one now down here. And it's all about just experimenting. It's too big. And seeing what you prefer. I do like this medium hard brush. That's really nice. Okay, I think that might be a little bit too um, much the same size as that one. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here and I'm making it curved to go right along right along with the shape of my circle. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of a sparkle. So I'm going to add a new layer. This time I'm not going to clip it. I'm going to go over to the brush menu and choose luminance and then I like this flare right here so I'm going to test this out. I'm going to put one right there just so I could see what the size is. That's a little bit too big so I'm going to drag this down. Let's try 20% and I think I would like to have a little sparkle right in there. I do like that. Now I'm going to make a little smaller one and it's going to go about right here. Maybe not directly across. Let's try this. Okay, I am liking that. I think I'm just about done. So the next thing I want to do is go to Gallery, and then I'm going to rename it, put my name and period number there, and then I'm going to back it up to my Google Drive so that it will always be there. I'm going to cross this out, and I'm going to write in my name, Mrs. Parham, period one and retap and there it is right there so I can upload it.